Alright guys, so I am in my command prompt, right? Whether whether you have Windows, Mac, Linux, or any other operating system that supports Docker, you're good. If you can do Docker and you can see some text here, or you can do Docker run hello dash word, and you can see hello word, you can just see no errors and nothing, you're good to go, right? If you see, I think, a hello, hello from Docker. If you see this, you're good. You can start this tutorial right now, right? Once it's installed Docker, make sure it works. Once you do these two commands, you're good to start. Let's do this, okay. What do we wanna do? We wanna start a Redis instance. And Redis instance, since it's a server, obviously, it's listening to a port, obviously, right? Since it's a CCP, right? It has to listen to a layer four port on, a, on an IP. So you have to obviously start it with a port. And we need to know that port name. And I'm, I, I know that port number. Okay, we're going to show you right now. So here's what you do. You do docker run, right? And always make it a habit to name your container. And I'm going to name it RDB, Redis. I don't know, I just named it RDB. Okay? And then after the, you give it a name, you say, okay, where, how do you going to expose the port? Because the port is running on, I think it's 6379. Took me a while to know what that port 6379. So, as usual, this, the highlighted part, right? is what is running on the container okay that port that's running the container this port can be anything you want it could be 7777 it could be 10,000 right and that is will what will be mapped right on your host machine which is called Hussein Mac in this case to your to your container right so in this case if you mapped it the same you can have the same and let if you if you already have uh, a port that is running on 6379, you might get an error, right? But again, this could be anything. This has to be 6379, right? And then finally, you do Redis. And uh, is it a, can I do this? Okay. Redis is essentially the image on the Docker Hub, right? It has to be called Redis. And then you run, and that kind of ready to accept. That's kind of fast, right? And plus, I run it before. That's why it just. It just immediately starts. So in your case, my download the image and do all that mumbo jumbo and start the connection. So I can now start doing stuff. All right. Where is that command CLI that we're talking about? Where is that Redis command line interface? Right. So we're going to leave this uh, con uh, command terminal up here. You can do dash D if you want and make it detached. But I like to keep my container so I can see what's going on and what 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 requests are coming right so it's good it's good to just kind of tail it so I'm gonna go ahead and do shell new window and look at that right so we have like a side-by-side -side terminal and here's what you're gonna do we will jump into container we're gonna bash into the container not bash we're gonna yes we're gonna execute the redis dash cli command inside the container, we're gonna go inside the container and then run the command line interface inside the container. So how do we do that? We do docker, execute, dash interactive terminal, ITE, and then you specify the name of the Redis container, which we called what? RDB, right? And then the final thing is the command. And the command to run, you can do bash and then run it, but you can also run the command that is called Redis dash cli hopefully i got it right so it's called redis dash cli i don't know why it's not just called redis all right and you're in now you are on the redis cli right you're there all right what can we do guys we spin up a docker container how about we set a key because that's what it's a key value store right so i'm going and look at how beautiful this autocomplete is you can see the autocomplete immediately happening, right? So I'm gonna set a key that is called, I don't really thought about that, huh? I'm gonna set a key that called name, right? And then call it Hussein, right? So now it says okay, which means the name has been set. How do you get it? Very hard, get and then key.
<laughs> All right. That's pretty cool, right? You set a name and then you get it back, right? How about I'm going to set a value name temp, right? This is another key and that's called Edmond. And then we're going to set an expiry for that thing, right? And uh, I think the syntax is EX and then you specify how many seconds. So let's specify 10 seconds, okay? So I set a new key called Edmond, uh, name temp. So let's get it, temp, name temp, and it's called Edmond. So let's wait for 10 seconds and then pull it again. And that should go away. Let's try it. Has it been 10 seconds already? Yes. So it had been 10 seconds and now we're getting nil. That means it doesn't exist. Nil means anything that doesn't exist. Example of something that doesn't exist, balloony. Balloony doesn't exist. So it says nil. All right, so we learned set. We learned set with expiration. We learned get. How about exist? Does exist is pretty cool. Exist is just it returns a true false or just a number, I think. Name temp. Name temp doesn't exist. How about name? Name does exist, right? Just then zero and one, right? And we're gonna make a video, guys, uh, about like Node.js or JavaScript against the Redis database. So stay tuned for that video. Subscribe if you would like to, right? Let's go ahead and delete. Dill, that's not hard. It's exactly like the command line interface in Windows at least, right? Dell name. And now it's deleted, it says true, right? Now if I say exist name, it doesn't exist anymore, let's clear, All right? So let's append, If I app can I append to something that doesn't exist, right? Let's do Hussein, right? I got seven, I have no idea what that, what that mean. We got it back, so let's append to name, uh, John, we got 11. I don't know what that, what, I, what that means, seriously, I don't know. Is this one, two, three, four, five, six? Oh man, we get back the length of the string. That is amazing. And now if I do a get name, that's pretty cool. All right, that's cool, right? And then uh, we did append. How about we do a publish subscribe model? So here's how, what do you do guys? So I, let's assume I have my YouTube channel and I'm gonna create a channel called new videos, right? I'm gonna subscribe to a channel called new videos, right? And just like that, I cannot do much here. That's it. See, I I cannot type anything here. I'm kind of waiting for results because we, we, we told you, right? We talked about this. We shift to a push model when we subscribe. And then how do I publish a video? So very simple. Let's go ahead and create another shell, hopefully. Yes, it works. And then we're going to do docker exec dash it rdb. Uh, what are those called? Uh, Redis uh, CLI? All right, I keep forgetting. Okay, good. We're in. Now I'm going to publish to the channel that's called new videos. A message then says uh, Redis crash course is up, babes. And then we published it successfully. Let's go back to the other terminal. Ooh, nice. We get a message. Now, I didn't work with this JavaScript yet, but I'm believing we're going to get back a nice JSON formatted string, right, that we can work with. So we get that. We get that. Let's, let's, pub, let's publish another thing. Publish new videos. Uh, I don't know. C sharp crash course. Published a new video. Like an amazing. And we get it back. Isn't that amazing, guys? Right? Let's what happened if I publish a channel that doesn't exist? Sup. Oh. Huh. It fails. It gives you zero. That means I couldn't find that channel because either that nobody's I don't know if it creates a physical channel or not, but what happens here is everything is here is by the way is done in the memory. Right, guys? But what's happening here is if no subscribers exist for that channel, then it's going to give you a zero, I think. <laughs>